Welcome back, everyone. We are here for another wonderful storytelling episode. This is time I just love. Sit back, grab a snack, listen to a story, meet some new people, laugh a little bit, cry a little bit. I, I just, I love this more than I love most things, which is pretty sad. Um, today, Julie Navikas is going to be reading for us, and I'm so excited. This is my first time meeting Julie and my first time learning about her books. Welcome, Julie. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is going to be fun. New stories. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm six. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to tell everybody a little bit about Julie. She's an award-winning author of contemporary romance. She has a keen ability to weave heart-wrenching, second-chance love stories through relatable characters and humility, humor, and humorism. And, it, and heroism. Uh, she has become a much-anticipated new author with Inkspell Publishing. We love our friends at Inkspell. When not writing, she spends her time serving as the executive director of the Writing Champions Project, a global writing community. She is also the public relations manager with Burning Soul Press and an award-winning instructor in the School of Communication at Illinois State University, where she teaches coursework in writing for public relations, magazine production and design, and public speaking. And she calls me busy. She is a mom to three children, Lillian, Colton, and Brady, and has been happily married to her high school sweetheart, Tommy, for 10 years. Congratulations on that achievement. That's pretty Aww. cool. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Lovely. So today you're going to be reading from your newly released I Love You Yesterday, which is a contemporary romance. Joshua Templeton married the wrong woman. Tess Browning was never meant to be his wife. He never should have said, I do, but she's also never should have slept with the neighbor. When divorce shatters the illusion of perfection, Josh reels from the mistakes he's made, retreating into the past to determine where it all went wrong. But when an old letter from a long lost high school sweetheart, Mavis Benson reappears, the real search for answers begins. 10 years before, Mabus vanished, vanished from his life. The desire to finally learn the truth ignites a fire in Josh and her memory catapults him on a journey to uncover the mystery behind why she left. But one thing is certain, the last place he ever expected to find her was in his brother's bed. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm sorry. The music just felt like it needed to be there. A hundred percent. I am super excited to hear this story, and I'm <laughs> sure that I'm going to be adding it to my TBR list. So I'm just going to sit back and listen along. So when you're ready, please take the microphone and read aloud. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm just going to move this over. Is it okay if I stare at the screen on this side. Please feel okay. free. Whatever okay. makes your life easier. Perfect. Excellent. All right. So this is chapter one, and this is from Josh's perspective. The lights flickered on in the parking lot outside of Josh's office window, a gray haze creeping over the Los Angeles skyline as darkness descended on the early December day. Falling his hands into fists, he rubs his aching eyes. The burn behind his lids screamed at the pressure the long hours logged on the computer, catching up with him as he sifted through the backlog of patient charts. With a groan, Josh snapped his laptop shut and began the monotony of his pre-departure routine. His hands glided along the hard, sleek wooden surface of the desk with a sanitizing wipe. Mental note, he thought, pick up more of these. Lifting the metal nameplate engraved with Dr. Joshua Templeton, he slid the white cloth beneath it. The vibration of his phone interrupted the stillness of the office and the preliminary shopping list running through his brain, each tremor disrupting the end of day calm. With a glance at the screen, Josh bit down on the inside of his cheek before accepting the call. The metallic taste of blood filled his mouth. What do you want, Tess? His stomach churned as his name, her name left his lips. Lovely way to start a conversation, Joshua, truly. Josh shrugged. After being married to Tess for four torturous years, her shrill voice looped on repeat in the back of his mind, an instant tension headache in the making. Again, Tess, what do you need? 
His palms tingled and a numbness settled into his fingertips. And don't call me that, you know I hate it. Josh dropped the wipe in the trash, put Tess on speaker and cupped the back of his neck to knead the sore muscles. It's already been a long day, now what? I have our final divorce papers and I would like your signature on them tonight. Oh, Josh exhaled and smashed his eyes closed. I don't trust you. I need Austin to look over everything first. If he can come, I'll sign. Anger seeped into the pit of his stomach, agitating the remains of a veggie burger he'd eaten for a late lunch. A wave of nausea washed over him and a sheen of cold sweat coated his forehead. How do you still do this to me? Well, text me, I'm in the neighborhood. She snickered and ended the call. In the neighborhood, he thought. Josh snorted, an ironic bubble of laughter surfacing from the depths of his soul. Give my best to Dalton Shepard, he spit into the silent phone, each word punctuated by the knife she'd rammed into his heart with her betrayal. His knuckles cracked as he pounded out a quick, angry text to his brother. Placing his phone on the top of the desk, he rested his head on the surface. His cheek stuck to the top layer of his notepad, the pen's ink colliding with his skin, tattooing him with a smeary blue. One deep breath later, and his phone lit up. My marriage ends tonight. Josh turned into his driveway, the sole home on the street absent of holiday cheer. He sneered at his neighbor's 10 foot blow up Santa and flashy light show. Shove it Santa, there is nothing holly and jolly about tonight. Shifting his Jeep into park, he killed the engine and allowed the momentary silence of the car's cabin to fill his ears. In the darkness, the living room lights on the main floor glared through the front picture window of the modern, unfestive home, the home he and Tess had bought together. Air infiltrated his lungs, working to quell the uneasy pit growing in his stomach. He dropped his head to the cool steering wheel, breathing out the last minutes of his marriage, counting down to the finale. Five, this will be over soon. Four, she'll finally be gone from my life. Three, the nightmare is almost over. Two, this is the hardest thing I'll ever have to do. One, no, wait, there's been one thing harder. The sudden realization chilled his broken soul, an invisible force squeezing his heart. Josh pushed the memory and the pain aside, allowing ire to replace it as he slammed the car door closed. With a twist of the doorknob, he stepped inside, each footfall falling heavier than the last as he trudged forward. Hey, Austin grunted, pushing a place setting aside on the dining room table. Yeah, Josh nodded at his twin and dropped his backpack to the lowermost step on the staircase. With the flip of the lock on the front door, the sloshing acid in his stomach dissolved the final minuscule shred of desire he had to save his marriage. Tess's pale blonde curls bounced with each step as she climbed the small set of steps, the silhouette of her lover hidden in her prized Mini Cooper on the shadowy curb behind her. You're alone? Josh held the screen door open, his scattered mind flashing back to the middle school etiquette class he once took. Just be polite, even though you know she won't. Well, did you want an audience? She asked, waving her hand behind her. She painted each fingernail in her signature bubblegum pink color. Sadness peaked at the top of the emotional roller coaster. The sorrow consumed him as she swept past, joining Austin at the dining room table with the large pile of divorce paper she's housed in a blue folder. Without a word, she handed it over. Austin perched a pair of reading glasses on his nose and took a seat, reserving a small glare for Tess as she stalked away. Just give me a few minutes to look these over, Josh. He disappeared behind the folder. Josh nodded. I failed. The woman he vowed to love and cherish for a lifetime stood before him, her gums smacking the roof of her mouth as a neon green bubble blew from her pink lips. He stared, forcing his brain to see past the woman before him, past her adultery, past her disinterest in commitment. I don't even know who you are anymore. What are you thinking? Tess eyed him. He grinned, his gaze dropping to the floor. Um, I guess where it all went wrong, when it all went wrong, He shrugged and stuffed his hands in his pocket. Maybe what I did to make you feel like you wanted or needed someone else? A dull ache pounded in his heart, grief hammering through his bloodstream. Josh locked eyes with her, and for the briefest of moments, the girl from their early days of college gazed back. The girl he'd fallen in love with, with gripped his battered heart as the memory of their blossoming romance preyed on the cloud of depression blanketing the room. 
She laughed, her shrill cackle piercing the air like a needle to a balloon. Oh, please. It was all wrong from the start. I never should have married you when you were still in love with someone else. Josh scrunched his nose and squinted. What? All right, Josh, this is all fine. You can sign. Austin interrupted, rising from his seat and removing his glasses. He held out a black ballpoint pen and gestured toward the chair in front of him. Tess raised her pencil thin eyebrows. I told you so. Well, you can't blame me for not believing you. Honesty has not been your strong suit, he added with a snort. She scoffed and Josh accepted the pen. He sat, firmly signing Dr. Joshua Michael Templeton in monotonous repetition on each highlighted line. Each stroke of the pen, each stain of ink sealed the failure of a lifetime. Laying the pen on the table, Josh picked up the pile of papers and returned them to their home in the blue folder. He swallowed the bile rising in his throat, his attention drifting to the abstract swirl of blue and black colors in the painting on the opposite wall. I can take these to city hall in the morning and get them processed by the judge, Austin said softly. Josh nodded and handed the folder over as the growing burn behind his eyes threatened to break the feeble dam. That would be outstanding, Austin. It saves me a trip. Tess flung her purse over her shoulder, the fringe swaying rhythmically with each click of her heels. Cracking the front door, she glanced back at the brothers. Tess opened her mouth as if to speak, but bit back the words. She left in silence instead, quietly closing the door behind her. I don't know what to say, said Austin, gripping Josh's shoulder. I'm sure it hurts like hell right now, but you are way better off without her. He squeezed before letting go. Do you want me to stay? Put a game on or something? Take your mind off of it? Josh inhaled. The imagined squeak of sneakers on a basketball court gripping his ears with consideration. But he shook his head. No, thanks, Austin. I appreciate your help coming over tonight and coming over so late too, but I think I'll just go to bed and bury this whole fucking nightmare. His lips attempted a smile, but the quiver of his muscles betrayed him. Okay, call me if you need anything, all right? Yeah, I will, thanks. Austin smiled and exited through the side door. The garage opened, then closed. His Corvette pulled out of the driveway and sped down the street, leaving the house in complete and total silence. Josh forced his shaking legs to stand. With each step forward, he dragged his body to the staircase like a ball of lead had been strapped to his ankles under the confines of a prison sentence. As he pushed the door to his bedroom open, the hinges whined. An empty bed looked back, solemn yet inviting. With the intent to face plant into the mattress, Josh entered the room. Cheerful, colored snowflakes danced across the bare walls, the festive merriment from outside invading his hole of despair. He sneered and crossed the space, tugging the curtains closed to block out the holiday happiness. Fuck you, Frosty, he thought. Josh pushed the door open to the walk-in closet, unbuttoned his shirt and tossed it in the hamper. His back roared, protesting the long hour spent at the computer. With a twist, the stretch lifted his line of sight to a cardboard box tucked in the back corner. And like the flaps of the cardboard, Josh's heart tore down the middle, the same cold chill from the car returning to ricochet throughout his body. At this point, why the hell not, he muttered, snagging the box from the top shelf and retreating to his bed. His butt met the mattress as he lifted the flaps and stared at the variety of forgotten mementos from his youth. Science medals, team photos from high school football, yearbooks, even a dried flower from senior prom. The petals crumbled to the touch as the air escaped his lungs, rushing forward with the energy and an excitement of a fugitive. Duchess, he whispered. His shaking fingers glided along her photo, rousing her youthful presence from what now seemed a distant dream. Josh closed his eyes, filling his mind with the recall of her essence. A shiver erupted along his spine with the memory of her tender companionship, of her soft giggle, and the way the very beat of her own heart stirred his own. The girl from his youth trudged across his soul, fresh footsteps on his grave. Her cascade of long, dark curls met her shoulders in the photograph flowing wildly about like ivy on a trellis, and her big striking green eyes smiled back at him, full of secrets, full of mystery. Josh touched her cheek in the photo as the first tear overpowered the dam. It's too much, it's all too fucking much. As he shoved the box aside, the contents crashed and dispersed across the floor. He waved his hand in dismissal and rubbed at the eyes, rubbed at his eyes as the photograph fell from his fingertips. It floated to the floor to join the trinkets of the past. 
With a flop onto his stomach, Josh tucked the single pillow on the bed beneath him. And one giant sigh later, he nodded off. The thunder boomed and lightning splintered the inky sky. Disoriented by the sudden storm pulling him from sleep, Josh opened his eyes to witness the lightning show cut through the cracks of the curtains. The storm raged, pouring buckets of water over Rosewood. You've got to be kidding me, he groaned, flinging his legs over the side of the bed. His feet collided with the contents of the box, each toe meeting a piece of his childhood. Josh rolled his eyes and waved the metaphorical white flag. With the click of the lamp, he surveyed the damage and dropped to the floor, resigned to stuffing his past back into the depths of his locked soul. But there it was. An innocent, crumpled up envelope stared up at him from the floor, his name written in loopy cursive on the front. It invited him, beckoning him inside. Agony bit into his stomach, squeezing the fleeting contentment of sleep from his gut, only to be replaced with the bitter taste of solemn defeat. You fooled me completely, he thought. His hands toyed with the envelope. Digging a finger beneath the lip, he flirted with the idea of revisiting the seventh circle of hell once more. Damn you, Mavis, he whispered and tore the letter from the envelope. It fluttered to the floor and the words of the past rippled over his body with the intensity of a rusted razor gliding across his skin. It read, my dearest Joshua, by the time you read this, I'll be gone. I'm not asking you to understand, but I am asking that you let me go. Please don't try and find me. I left because I had no other choice. If I stayed and you learned the truth, you would put your dreams aside in favor of me. I can't let you do that. I can't let my mistake be the reason you're kept from your future and the man you're meant to be. I didn't know what else to do. I'm scared, I'm terrified, and I'm stupid. And I just hope one day you'll find it in your heart to forgive me, to forgive us. Until then, my love, I loved you yesterday. I love you today. And I'll love you tomorrow, Joshua Templeton, Mavis. It still stung. Vomit threatened Josh's throat as he swallowed, the memories erupting from the remains of his shattered soul. I fucking loved you, he whispered to the silent room, all traces of thunder having subsided. Josh crinkled her letter in his fist and dropped his head to his knees. The stillness of the room beat across his brain, only the pitter patter of soft rain meeting the window, breaking the lifeless moment. You never forget your first love, do you? Josh snorted, grinning for the first time that day. His head lifted from the safety of his knees. Tess, you were right, he said. I've always been in love, just not with you. It's always been Mavis. He stuffed her letter back in its envelope. Wow, that's... Okay, I was right. I have to read this book. (laughs) Okay. And I hope that's how others will feel too after that first one. (laughs) Very confirmed. (laughs) So tell me, what was your favorite part about writing this book? Yeah, I think my favorite part was that as a new author, um, it, it provided me a learning opportunity. Uh, much of what I do in my profession is I write for public relations. I write with a journalistic lens and writing a romance novel, you use a vastly different writing skill set. Absolutely. And so I think that's what my favorite part is, is that I learned so much from the stories that are storytelling side of things that it challenged me in ways I just never anticipated. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think we all find that um, the difference between writing first person and third person, just that alone is remarkable. It's mind boggling. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm so glad you came to read for us today. Will you come back with your next book? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> if you I, would have me. I would love to have you come back. You were a complete joy. Thank you so much. Um, anybody who's looking for Julie's book, all you have to do is jump on the show notes and all the links are there. Thanks again, Julie. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.